Welcome to FL Recordings. This is my crib. This is where all the magic happens. <laughs> Welcome to FL Recordings. This is where I make music and uh, work with bands and artists and also produce wizardry and also all the <laughs> all the videos that you guys see online on YouTube and stuff. Today I'm going to kind of go over the room, a little bit of the history and uh, some of the gear that I use to make all of this stuff. So real quick, this is my desk. This is my main console. Um, I've had this set up for about four years now. It is a Mackie 8 bus, 32 channels, only 16 in or wired right now. I have an Apollo UAD over here with uh, M Audio 2626 running for the additional eight channels. So I have 16 channels in and out currently. Have a few external preamps and ART tube preamp. Uh, have that running on the drum rooms right now. And then a Focusrite ISA 428. I love this thing. I have this on my overheads and my close mics for the ride and the hat. Right here is kind of where the sound and everything happens in the studio. So everything from the drum room pumps over here and I will go ahead and EQ everything uh, to taste over here and then all the preamps are what's getting used obviously. Uh, so it's a little bit of an old school setup. It's old school Firewire but I'm running on a Windows machine so I have a custom built PC in this little desk rack. Um, this is the actual PC itself. Got a couple power amps for my NS10s and my EG Works monitors. And then this is basically camera gear world. I have my external viewer, an extra lens, battery chargers for everything, SD cards, and I try to just keep everything as tidy as possible. And then over there is my Lacey SSD. That's basically where all my projects and everything live so I can work between here and home and not really ever have to miss anything. And then lastly, just, you know, giant Mackie big knob to control the monitors. This just controls the volume of the room. And then a couple guitars and basses that I've acquired over the years for stuff. Um, we have this old school Yamaha uh, Fender and a really awesome sounding PV bass. We picked this up actually from the same guy that I got my desk from. Sounds great. And then an H string bass that I have never found a use for, to be honest with you. <laughs> I've always tried to find something to put on, but it's just so difficult to get them to play well without them rattling to all hell, so they always end up getting cut from anything I try to put it on. And a vintage Rosewood acoustic guitar from Mexico. Uh, I don't remember if this was mine or my dad's. We've owned three or four of these over the years. Uh, we always used to pick one up when we would go to Mexico for the holidays and uh, they're great sounding guitars. I've, and then over here is just a couple headphones that I use for people recording vocals, uh, guitarists who just want to hear a little bit better. Um, everything is over here and they're more than welcome to use that stuff. And the ukulele that my little brother Jesse gave me, uh, it was his, he was never using it. Honestly, it hasn't been on any recordings in here as of yet, but it is a fun thing uh, whenever a guitarist picks it up and just tries to play on it while I'm editing drums or something else. <laughs> Over here to the other side of the desk is basically guitar tone land. I have an old school crank, uh, Chadwick. It's a really nice crunchy amp. Uh, Mesa Triple Rec, my buddy Sonny sold this to me for a stupid good deal paired with the oversized Mesa 412 over there in the other room. This thing is an absolute monster, just got used the other day. And then an old EVH 5153 that I've had for probably seven or eight years now. Great amp, love this thing. And just a couple of small sticks. Uh, my buddy Riley gave me these Jay Weinberg signature sticks uh, from Vader. This is an old school Chris Adler signature stick that I got from him personally and got him to sign it back in 2010, 2011. That was quite a while ago. And then this is a stick that my buddy Mike gave me. Uh, he's the guitarist for a band called Bias, Breaking in a Sequence. And uh, the drummer for that band is Dave Silvera from Korn, or X Korn. And this is one of his sticks, so he gave me that. And then I have these awesome custom sticks that my mother-in-law got me. And uh, they just say FL Recordings in my, la my name, and uh, that was super awesome. So I've just kept everything over here uh, together over the last couple years. When I retract guitars, I do everything through a DI so I can always grab the clean signal in case I ever need to redo anything. Everything runs here to this DI box. The clean signal will run down into my patch bay and then the parallel will come over here to the Kemper or one of the amps, whatever's getting used that day. 
and basically we build out the custom tone to whatever the project is needing at the time. And it, there's just kind of an assortment of pedals underneath the Kemper as well. The effects, compressors, uh, some boost pedals. I uh, have this really cool Astral Destiny from Earthquaker. It's a great uh, reverb delay pedal. And then just a couple odds and ends for bass and guitar. So this, I like to keep all my stuff nearby and on hand on the desk that way. I'm not running across into the other room to find a pedal. I can just kind of quickly visualize and see that, okay, I need this exact pedal for the sound that we're getting. It's right over here on my left-hand side. Let's just wire it up and get going. Speaking of wiring, down here we have my KT1176. Honestly, it doesn't get used on much. I picked it up on a really good deal. I was hoping it would sound better on vocals than it does, but it does get a lot of use on bass guitar so it's really good for leveling out and getting the bass guitar to sit just how I like and then down here is just all my patch bass so everything from the live room comes out on the top row it will go into the Mackie or the preamps um, then out of the Mackie and then into my actual interface so it's like a kind of multi-stage process that way if I need to intercept the signal at any point I can and I'm not having to run behind the desk. Everything just comes out nice and clean here. So having that flexibility is really helpful. Over here, we have a couple of the records and vinyls from albums I've done or have been a part of over the years. I honestly wish I had started collecting them a lot sooner. This is probably like one tenth of everything that I've ever been a part of. I've been very fortunate over the years to have been part of a lot of music also. Moving forward, every time uh, I work on an album, I always buy the record. And a lot of the times the bands will ask me, like, why didn't you just tell us? We would have just given it to you for free or whatever. But honestly, I'd rather support the people who support me as well. I think that's just the best way to support bands nowadays is to pick up a merch item or pick up their record. This is a really cool one that Super Monster Party put together for our last release. They're a video game themed band that I play drums for. It is really awesome because it's kind of like an old school Sega Genesis cartridge. Comes with a cool poster, a little kind of game manual style going over a lot of the lyrics and has a lot of cool art. I'm right there. Uh, they also threw in some pins with the record as well as a video game that the band is a part of. So back here along this wall, this was Drum World, it still is. It's just significantly smaller to what my collection of ready, readily available stuff was just like a year ago. I had a kind of cast of rotating snares over the years. I'll, I used to keep my old PDP X7 here, the silver to black sparkle fade kit. That has since gone to LA. It's staying out with the lines of the gates guys. That way I don't have to move hits back and forth. So I built a duplicate kit here. So I now have two sets of hardware and shells for whenever I need to play shows out there. I just fly out there with cymbals and pedals and all my shells and my hardware are there. Right now we just have two DW snares. We have a 5x14 or 5.5x14 black nickel over brass snare. And then we have a DW design cherry over maple 6.5x14 snare. So these in conjunction with the Lars snare that I have in the other room that I'll show you guys in a bit. Um, are basically the three that I put on every album. I've also had my old DW 8x14, that was my live snare with STM, uh, and is currently out with LATG in LA as well. I think I also had a pearl brass snare and a couple vintage snares that I have, have since gotten rid of just because they either weren't getting used as much or I just needed the cash at the time to fund some other gear, so I just ended up getting rid of those. This is the only remnant of that X7 up here. Marching snare that I've retrofitted with some modern snare heads. That way, if I'm ever cutting a record that needs a ridiculously huge snare sound, uh, that is available. And then just a ton of odds and ends down here. We have a batch of sticks and some really cool sticks that my wife got me. They light up, so you'll, you guys will see those in a future video. Over here we have just kind of a little bit of a storage system. Uh, microphones up here, just extra mics I have or broken ones. Bunch of mic clips over here and just like a bunch of like loose stuff. So like cymbal, cymbal sleeves, hand towels, drum keys, like kick patches, like all, all this kind of loose little small stuff gets stuck in this little drawer. Forgot to go over these. This is my Vintage Vista Light. This is a late 70s, early 80s kit. You guys have seen me use this one in a couple videos. Um, I think my last one I did with it was this, was a Bring Me the Horizon cover that I did a few years back. Just need a 
put some new heads on it and get some new hardware. That's why I haven't touched it in a few years. And then down here is just an assortment of drum heads that are, some are new, some are used, and I just keep around in case I ever need an extra head. We have a couple Tom packs. I'm a big fan of the Remo Emperors and the Remo Pinstripe Clears. I typically get the three packs of those and just switch them out every couple months. A couple odds and ends heads. This is like just a spare 16 inch uh, Emperor head. A lot of snare heads. Just having so many snares, I have to have a lot of snare heads on hand for when they break or just start going out. A lot of Power Stroke 3s, a couple P77s, which I'm still on the fence about. I can't even decide if I love it or hate it. Ambassador and Emperor heads as well. Those are probably my two go-tos. This one has an Emperor on it right now. They just have a lot of openness and I've always enjoyed the Remo stuff uh, in recording situations. They last the longest, I feel, and they always sound the best. They don't really have that plasticky sound that I find other drum heads do. And there's just a couple random cases and like kick drum heads down here and a few symbols that are brand new so I don't have them on my symbol tree. Lastly, we have the, I don't even know what to call this. This started out as an organizational board to kind of keep track of projects and what was done, what needed to be done. But over time, it kind of just slowly morphed into this like thing that everybody that comes to record here will take a little spot and kind of write whatever they want or put like a band logo not everybody makes additions to it but when they do it's like kind of cool that just like i said it's just a little temporary part of history there you know <laughs> and then we have the three stm records that i was a part of buried was the first one that they released and that's when i joined the band shortly after that dropped uh, their drummer left uh, Jonathan who recorded that and I took a spot for the foreseeable future of the band. I helped uh, write and record Achilles and then I also helped write and record uh, the proclamation with all the guys. Love those dudes. We did a lot of shows together and a lot of touring together. It was a great experience and uh, super thankful for all that stuff. Now for the juicy bit. This is my live room. So this room has undergone a tremendous amount of transformations over the years. It has started out as a tiny little white shed that my dad and I built with my grandfather. It was just this room initially, as was the studio. I built everything when running everything out of just this one room. And over time, I would make additions here and there. Uh, we built the control room uh, here a few years after. The acoustic treatment was kind of just like here and there. I built the cloud a few years ago. I built this back wall uh, just a year ago. I also wanted to showcase this back wall diffuser that I made and this really awesome FL cutout that my wife made me. It's super, super sick. It really just helped make it look so sleek and awesome in here. Now it felt like the centerpiece to the room. Things have kind of just slowly morphed over time, including the lighting, the microphones in use, just kind of to figure out the room the best that I could. It's a small drum room. It's about 12 by 12. Uh, wall to wall so with all of the acoustic stuff it's probably even smaller trying to get a good sound in a room like this for drums is kind of tough especially if you like big drum sounds like i do so i've kind of just had to learn to work and tweak as i've gone along over the years to really dial into what i like nowadays this is probably the room you're most familiar with if you watch my content uh you're most familiar from angles from back here looking down on the kit i showcase this room a lot uh, both in my own stuff and the stuff that I do for my clients such as like Riley and uh, this other drummer that I work with and I've also done a handful of like small video projects for other bands in this room. This back wall has two room mics. Uh, it has two V67s from MXL. Uh, I've had these for about 11 years since the start of my recording journey. Up top we have a pair of AKG 414s, XLS 2s I think is the model number. Great overheads great on acoustic guitars and they're my go-to vocal mics. These get used pretty frequently. They're like my Swiss Army knife of microphones. Uh, they just sound great on everything paired with that focus right. On ride and hats, we have SE7s, the stereo pair. Great small diaphragm condensers, really just directional signals. So if I need a little bit more detail on the ride, or on the hi-hats, I can just ride those mics up a little bit and it'll sound great. Tom's a pretty standard MD421 all across. Kick drum has a 421 on the inside as well. And then this custom sub mic that I built out, uh, thanks to my buddy Mac uh, over at Stone Creek Sound, he showed me and gave me some diagrams of how to get this thing to work. Super happy with the result. Only picks up the low end on the kick drum. For anybody that's ever wondered why this snare drum thing is in front of my kick drum, that's what that is. Over on the snare drum, we have a Shure 
Beta 57A, just kind of like a traditional 57, it just got a little bit more bite to it, so I feel like I have to do less in post to get the snare to sit and sound like I like. Again, another little trick that Mac has given me is this really cool MXL mic. I don't remember the model number. I'll go ahead and post it in the video here. It's basically a guitar mic with two capsules in it, and you wedge them about at the rim of the snare drum, so it just, it's a nice, like, ambient uh, snare mic. So it picks up ghost notes really nicely, and that's what I use it for mainly. And then underneath, we have just another SM57, pretty standard on the snare bottoms. That covers all of the kit mics. Next, we'll go over the cymbal tree, which is a little empty right now. <laughs> Instead of all my cymbals just being in the floor in the other room, like on the drum wall rack, I now get to display them over here. Makes it super easy for whenever I need to make quick adjustments, like replacing a crash or trying something else out. I can just reach over and grab something instead of running back and forth between rooms with one or two cymbals at a time. And lastly, probably the thing that everybody asks the most about is the drum kit itself. This is the DW Eco X shell set. Uh, I got this from my buddy Josh uh, about two years ago. He was dealing with some medical stuff at the time and he couldn't play drums, so he gave this set to me for a very, very, very awesome deal. And I am super thankful for that. He also just gifted me that drum throne. It's a really nice DW hydraulic throne. And uh, he's just awesome dude, great drummer, super solid dude. These are a bamboo birch hybrid kit. Uh, they're cross laminated, so they have all of the attack of birch. And since they're cross laminated, you get kind of best of both worlds and the fundamental tone of the shell is lowered as well. So they tune a little bit lower than most shells this size. Currently on the kit is my Lars snare. Uh, it's a Tama 14 by six and a half stainless steel shell. I think it's like a three millimeter thickness. Super beefy, super heavy. I'm actually gearing up to do some videos here in a sec, so that's why that's on the kit. For hardware, we have all pearl racks and pearl boom arms, some DW uh, boom arms somewhere. Like I said, I, I duplicated my home kit so I could leave my old kit with the band. There's kind of a lot of assortments of stuff here and there uh, between PDP. DW, Gibraltar, Pearl stuff. It's kind of like a mish mishmash of whatever will work. Um, but I'm really happy with it. Everything stays put and I can't really complain. Down on the pedals, we have my ACD Unlimited Custom FTW. They're basically hand built in Denmark. Dude is awesome. He has great customer support. I got these secondhand and he still has a lifetime warranty for all of his pedals and parts. So. I've had to have a couple things replaced and taken care of over the years, and he's always more than happy to ship out parts or just get me something that I want to try out. And they are amazing pedals. I have never found a pair of pedals that plays like them, and I'm super stoked and happy with them. Then we also have a DW3000 two-leg hi-hat stand. Same as the 7000. I have another one of those on my other kit. Same all around, I think. They don't play any differently. They have all the same hardware from what I've noticed. The only difference is that they just changed the model. Last but not least, all of my assortment of cymbals. From left to right, we have a 21 inch Legacy, 14 inch HHX Evolution Mini China. Right now we have a 15 inch pair of Legacy hats. Those are my buddy Riley's. The ones that you guys probably see me use more often are the 14 inch HHX Evolution hats or the Groove hats, I think is what they are. Uh, they're up on the symbol tree right now. Left Crash is typically a HHX Evolution 18 inch Ozone. We have a 10 inch HHX Splash, a 19 inch Legacy Crash. This one gets swapped out a lot with the 18 inch Evolution Crash and the Minel Dual Byzance crash over there on the tree. Depending on the recording application, one of those three will typically get used more than anything. Uh, down here we have a set of 13-inch HHX Evolution hats, a 19-inch Holy China, probably one of my favorite symbols ever. Um, super versatile no matter the genre or the recording, this thing gets left on there permanently. Right now I have my HH Powerbell Ride. Hard to find used especially. They're very expensive and I got mine for a really killer deal and it happened to be the brilliant variant of it which i've never seen another one of so lucked out on that one really hard one of the other ones that i use more frequently is the 21 inch aax raw bell dry ride great ride as well i use that one for many years with stm on the road and it sounds great live and in the studio settings 
if you guys have seen some of my more, pop, my more popular videos, you guys are familiar with the way that ride sounds. It's basically in all of my old Slipknot covers. That's basically it. Uh, Remo heads all around, pinstripes on it right now. I'm gearing up to swap them out with some clear emperors. Vic Firth X5AN uh, sticks. Love the nylon tips. And Vic Firth has always been super durable. They play and feel just the way I need. And I love that they're both weight balanced and pitch balanced. If I'm in here and recording something that needs to be a little bit heavier, then sometimes I'll switch over to the X5B ends. The only difference is that they're just a little bit heavier. And that's really about it. My trigger system and my in-ear system is down there on the floor. Uh, it's just a Roland TM2 running off of on triggers on the pedals, a little mixer that receives the send from the studio board, and a little output that runs to my uh, Shure se 215 uh, for monitoring my kicks and also just listening to stuff. So this is basically it. This is where all of my music career has developed. Uh, this is where I practice. This is where I record. This is where I work with people. This is basically the foundation of where I do everything. I'm very thankful for everybody who's ever come in to work in here and believe in the stuff that we do and we try to do. Uh, because I honestly don't know what else I would do <laughs> without, without music and drumming and all of this stuff in my life. It's given me a purpose and has really helped me like express how I feel and like the things that I want to accomplish. It has all just felt really natural and like right, if that makes sense. Like I never felt like this was forced. It always felt right to build all of this ourselves and try and just figure it out. And yeah, so this is FL Recordings. Like I said, I've done everything in here over the last 10 or 15 years. I was rehearsing in that room when it was just a shed. Now it has turned into a small, small one man studio. So <laughs> very happy with how the room has turned out over the years. But for now, this is home. This is what a lot of bands tell me feels like home for them. And I'm super stoked that I have gotten the opportunity to create all this music with people over the years and just do this for a living. Like it's it's super awesome to be able to say that you own a recording studio. Thank you guys for watching and supporting over the years. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. If you guys want to see me do more of these kind of like vlog gear overview kind of videos, then I'd be more than happy to just leave a comment below. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them as well. But that's all we have for today. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.